How are you doing today, sir? I'm good. How are you, man? I'm doing excellent. Um, I have to start with, I think, the most important question. Um, when Ryan Murphy sets you up with a great role, what's the thank you gift you get him? <laughs> um, doing good work, I hope. Um, you know, doing it justice, um, rising to meet the occasion and, um, and, and enjoying the experience and coming from a place of gratitude for it, you know? Um, I don't know that, <laughs> I don't know that there's anything in the material world that Ryan Murphy needs. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a real honor to be a part of this company and to be a part of um, his initiative to amplify marginalized voices and um, tell diverse stories. And uh, I, feel, I feel like this whole experience has been a reflection of his commitment to that. And uh, yeah, I, feel, I feel really honored to be a part of it. 100%. I am a big fan of what Ryan does. Uh, before I jump into your fantastic work in this movie, um, I've been asking everyone I've been speaking to the last few months the same three questions. I promise they're softballs. Uh, and so here we go. Um, All right. What, what TV series would you love to guest star on? Succession. I just mm. interviewed Jim and he gave the same answer. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Um, what movie have you seen the most? Probably like Almodovar's movies, just in general. Like uh, I, I sort of cycled through his movies over time. So, um, you know, uh, Bad Education or uh, All About My Mother or Talk to Her, those three probably. I just rewatched them again in quarantine. Um, also Magnolia, a lot of Paul Thomas Anderson stuff. Um, I love to revisit films that, that inspire me like that, you know. Um, so I'd say in that world. Uh, have you ever seen a TV show all the way through more than once? No. Okay, I'll leave it there. Uh, Great. Uh, jumping into why I get to talk to you, um, I cannot imagine what it would have been like to see this production off Broadway in 68. Have you ever sort of imagined being back there and experiencing what this would have been like? I mean, I can only know what I've read and talked to um, people who were there. Um, but, uh, you know, what I've learned from them, but, uh, it was revolutionary. It was unprecedented. It was so significant a moment to, uh, so I, I don't, I, I mean, I think the only thing I can equate it to is something as, as seminal as like, you know, the, the passage of gay marriage, um, laws, you know, like that, that level of, um, being validated uh, as a member of the LGBTQ plus community, I think, uh, you know, in 1968, it, it was probably on par with that. Just seeing yourself in a, a narrative um, probably was that impactful for people who had up to that point lived com entirely on the margins and in the shadows of, of mainstream heteronormative society. So I feel like it was a watershed moment and, uh, and, um, incredibly significant. I think about what the times were like in 68. And I think about the fact that this movie was made now 50 years later, <clears throat> and it's going to be released in 150 plus countries around the planet, same material and how things have changed. Um, mm. It has to mean a lot to you to be a part of this. It really is. And to be, you know, part of this as a, a member of an openly gay uh, cast of, actors, all of whom are thriving and succeeding and living in their own ways, um, full and uh, authentic lives. Uh, it, it, it's an incredibly um, humbling uh, company to be a part of. And, and, and when you mention all of the countries that this movie is going to be released in, you know, I don't think that they're all as progressive um, as other parts of the world. And I think it's it's, um, it's a kind of beacon perhaps for young people in parts of the world that don't feel as supported or identified or seen in, in the communities around them. And, uh, and so it's a particular honor to consider that, you know, it was one thing to do this play in New York and for all the people who were able to make it to the city and to make it to the Booth Theater while we were performing. Um, it, it's great, but I've heard from a lot of people in my travels in, in the year and a half since we finished the play in New York, um, you know, that 
they weren't able to see it. They weren't able to come. And, and now we get to amplify this story and put it out um, in a way that a place like only a place like Netflix could allow. So I think it's really particularly exciting and, um, and, and humbling. Uh, I also think that a lot of young people who take the freedom for granted, um, it's, you know, an education to realize when Michael is going into the stairway and he's dealing with his neighbors and he's nervous about what they could think what's going on in the apartment. The fact that they could call the police mm -hmm. and the whole, I mean, they could all, you guys could have all been arrested. How yeah. things have changed. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and how it's easy to, um, it's easy to take those changes and, um, and not think about the sacrifices that were made to ensure them. Uh, and I think a piece like this really does connect audiences and particularly younger audiences to, uh, to those who came before and those who had to endure the weight of um, marginalization, the weight of, um, of persecution, prosecution, um, in order that generations today, including mine, can enjoy um, pretty unparalleled freedom and integration. I'm a big fan of Bill Pope and you worked with him on the film. Uh, can you share maybe a little bit about what it was like working with him? Bill's amazing. I mean, he's so talented. And uh, and Joe Mantello, uh, also an incredible director. So the combination of the two of them, you know, I think Joe brought to this story the sensibility of the production that we collaborated on in 2018 on stage. And, and I think he worked with Bill to... Um, translate the spirit of that production into a cinematic language. Um, I think the two of them worked so well together, and uh, and and it's no it's no easy feat to um, to make cinematic uh, a, a story that takes place in one room, essentially. Um, you know, with some some minor departures outside uh, or upstairs, but you know, all by and large, this whole. This whole story takes place in, you know, at least 85, 90% of it takes place in one location. And so for them to be able to, uh, to, to create an environment that's so dynamic and so vivid and so cinematic, I think is a real testament to both of their talent. Uh, I'm still so curious what Michael uh, wrote to Harold and uh, I won't, I have, I'm out of time, so I can't ask you. Um, but uh, perfect. <laughs> hey, listen, uh, great work. Thank you so much for giving me your time. Of course. Thank you. Good to see you again.